Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. If it is your first time on this channel, welcome. Um, of course, uh, it will be of, 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 of great importance that you are able to see this and even more articles. So subscribe, like, comment and share. By so doing, you are able to get um, uh, the newest and the freshest content on all matters, finance and how you can be able to grow and become successful. So today I'm going to share about um, a personal topic to me because I'm mostly going to speak about myself. So what am I speaking about today? The reason I want to speak to you today is about why I don't spend as much as I could. It is of no, uh, it is no secret that I am a stingy person. Yes, I am very stingy. I do not just spend because I can. But rather, I try as much as possible to spend spend as little as I can. I'm one of those people who tells you to spend 10% of your income on rent. Yes, I am one of those people. Uh, I've been called all manner of names from stingy to uh, poor to a financial minimalist by the people who want to be a little bit kind. But I want to take you through my thought process so that you can be able to know and be able to glean uh, from my own experience. So my experiences, of course, root come from somewhere. And one of the things that had influenced me on knowing how to spend my money is my upbringing. Ladies and gentlemen, I was raised by a single mom who um, worked uh, this, the minimal jobs in the estates as a veg vegetable vendor. She had a kiosk in Nairobi, Kenya, and she would be able to buy fresh produce from the farmer's markets, uh, in Marikiti and Gikomba, uh, one of the bigger markets in Nairobi that supplies food across uh, Nairobi, and she'll be able to uh, uh, take the food and bring to the estates and be able to sell. I grew up in a humble upbringing, but a very rich upbringing. I grew up in an estate called Andorra and also Mweki Kasarani. And um, one of the things that I do appreciate about my humble upbringing is it taught me the value of every single shilling, every single amount of money that I have. I realized that no amount of money is too small. Each amount of money adds up to something. And because of that, I would be able to see my mom. She was very diligent in her finances. She would be able to do her calculations every day. She would say, this is what I spend. These were my expenses. I bought this and this and this and this and this is what I uh, was able to get. I sold this at this price. I sold this at this price. This is my total sales for the day. This is the stock that is remaining and this is how much is my profit. And she'll be able to plan. And because it is daily uh, uh, incomes, she'll be able to plan and know when to pay her, uh, her children's school fees, when to pay her rent and she was able to do her mathematics and because it is a book that was accessible to us and she, because she involved us in the planning of these expenses, I learned very quickly the value of every single shilling. She taught us to be able to plan effectively to be able to track all our expenses to be able to live minimally. and so much of why I spend as little as I spend is because of my upbringing. I have learned uh, to appreciate the simple things in life. I have learned to be comfortable with the little things in life. When the big things do come, they do not overwhelm me because I realize it's because of my small incremental efforts that I'm able to achieve the big things. I'm also, the other reason is because I enjoy looking at my net worth. Ladies and gentlemen, I started working from the year 2010. I was employed as an accountant. And uh, I remember my first salary was uh, 45,000 or 450 euros uh, or dollars. And uh, it was a lot of money for somebody who is starting. But I had a plan for each and every single shilling. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, like me and many other people, not just in Kenya, but across the world. You start out with debt. I had a student loan of 180000 or thereabout from the loans board. And uh, I started with a negative. But I realized that my net worth, because it is a negative, I have to work extra hard. 
and save and pay off the loan and be able to invest so that my net worth is go goes up. In the six months of working in 2010, my net worth grew. And net worth here, ladies and gentlemen, is all your assets, less all your liabilities. That is your net worth. It could be negative when you are over leveraged or when you have too many debts. And it could be a positive when you have more assets than liabilities. So in the year 2010, the end of year 2010, I was at negative 120,000 Kenya shillings or negative uh, 1,200 USD. Ladies and gentlemen, that is where I started. But I wanted to see my negative turn into a positive. And by the end of 2011, I had to taken a loan. I had bought two properties in Juja in the year 2011. I had significantly increased my income from the salary and had earned a bit more. I had grown in my career and I had saved a lot more with my circle and with my other investments. I had bought my first shares. And by the end of that year, despite having a loan, I was at negative 40,000 or negative 400 USD. Remember, I was already negative 120 beginning of the year, but now I'm negative 40,000. I had taken a loan, I had bought land, but I had also paid down my debt. And so, it has been a process. Every year I evaluate, am I growing? What is my net worth? And my net worth has been a, a positive after 2011. It has been a positive. Ladies and gentlemen, I am addicted to know every other time, how much is am I worth? And now being married, how much are we worth? Because we put our investments and, and our savings and uh, all our finances together. So how much am I growing? Then the other thing is, I want my children to be ambitious and not limited to my finances. That is why I spend as little as I can and invest as much as I, as I can so that my children can have options. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, your children are far, first and foremost limited by your resources. A child cannot dream too much because if their parents cannot afford the school fees, where are they going to go with their ambitions? So I want to be so financially capable that my children will not fear of dreaming. And in fact, I want to encourage them to have such big ambitions and such big dreams that they scare them. Because if your ambitions don't scare you, then you're still living in your comfort zone. Ladies and gentlemen, I also to have, I want to have options. I don't want to be too tired or too worried in case an, a, a, a job goes. In case I fall into unemployment. I don't want to be the kind of person who is always fearful that when your bosses sneeze, you jump up, you're afraid, you're always in fear because you do not have options. When your job goes, you can't survive for more than a year. I don't want to be able to live that kind of life. I want to have options that I can sit back and not be able to work. My desire as I started was to, to be able to retire in 10 years. And I'm still on track. Why not? Even though I have worked for 10 years and my finances have not gone as, as, as anticipated, I'm still on course because I want to have options. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing as bad as having expenses without options. Ladies and gentlemen, the other thing is I have found hacks to be able to cut down on my spending. That is why I spend as little as possible. I have learned to go to, for holidays when people are not going for holidays. I would go for holidays with my wife in January after everyone has left the December holiday season and when hotels are almost empty. When a 10,000 room hotel is charging 5,000 because there are no clients. When the beach is empty, doesn't have wholesalers and sellers on the ground. When I can enjoy the beach alone. I have learned to find hacks that cut down my spending significantly. And on that note, I think I will share some more tips on how to travel and how to spend less when you are traveling. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the other things is I have learned to find fulfillment, at, like I spoke earlier, on the little things. Not on what I buy. I do not find fulfillment in a new phone. Actually, let me tell you, the phone 
that I have currently is a second hand phone that I bought from somebody who wanted to upgrade to a newer phone. My phones always uh, stay for, for me for at least five years. And I don't buy the newest phone. I don't buy the newest, uh, uh, shiniest gadgets. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't even have a 4K TV and I don't know what it means to have one because I'm not excited by the things that I own, especially the things that are depreciating. Ladies and gentlemen, I have also learned to be a minimalist. If I don't need it, I don't buy it. If I want a new shoe, I ask myself, do I have other shoes that I can be able to use? I don't just buy because I have space to store them. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, the more you accumulate, the more you need to live in a bigger house, the more you spend on a bigger house, the more your expenses are going haywire. The least possessions that you have is the least house that you need and the least expenses that you spend. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm also addicted to passive income. I remember the first um, dividends that I got was around 3 USD, 300 shillings. Little money. But it was exciting. It was more exciting than my monthly pay, which was a lot more. Because I enjoy to see that my money has made money without me being actively involved in it. I'm addicted to the passive income. And my desire is to be able to have my passive income pay for my monthly expenses in the next five years. And I will have a video again on that. I would also desire to leave an inheritance for my children. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want my children to start on a negative like I started. I want my children to have, to start with a positive. If I can be able to buy them a house by the time they're starting with careers, that is my desire, for them to have each a house so that they can have a safe starting ground. They don't, so that they don't start on a negative net worth, but on a positive. Again, it is also biblical that you leave an inheritance for your children's children. And I want my children to also have options. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to also realize that life is not about what you spend. It's not about the newest gadget. But it's also about the safety and the security to be able to provide a safety net for you and your family. And because of that, and these other reasons that I have mentioned, I am able to spend as much. I, 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 I am able to spend very little. And actually, I could spend much more based on my income. But I don't because I look at the future. Ladies and gentlemen, my mom once told me, my beautiful mom once told me, that the things that are worth having are worth sweating for. So if, if, if having a life that is free from worry, a life that is free from pressure, if having your children able to pursue any careers that they can is worth it for you, then put the work. And part of the work is to deny yourself and invest as much as you can. Investing 5% of your pay only ensures that you work until you're 60 or until you drop dead. Investing in 20% ensures that by your 50s that you are a bit comfortable. Investing 30% of your pay ensures but by that by your 50s you are a bit more comfortable and can travel here and there. But investing more than 50% or thereabout ensures that you have safety and security. So ladies and gentlemen, I will leave you with that point. So ponder about it. Do you really need to spend? Again, don't spend because you can. Don't spend to impress people who will only be impressed and move on because the new thing has come. Take your time, think about it. And realize that the power to change your circumstances and your future is in your hands and especially your spending and investing. So thank you. If you're not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe kindly like, share, comment, give me topics that I need to share about. Again, by subscribing, you're able to get the latest feedback, the latest videos, the latest things that I speak about on matters, finances, and investments. 
So thank you and enjoy your 2021.